it says recording. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone. How are you all doing? So excited. I'm <laughs> yeah. I'm excited I too. I love these classes. I love Lori. I love you guys. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So we are going to be making edible gifts for Christmas. Are you all ready for Christmas? No. Almost. Not me either. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess I don't need this mask. <laughs> um, the reason I, I, I'm doing it on the stovetop is just because if I do it in the toaster oven, I have to turn my back on everyone, then I can't watch. Okay, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off the class with first starting to roast our almonds and pistachios. If you prefer to use your stovetop, you, you can use your stovetop and start roasting the chickpeas. If not, we're going to just do six minutes, six to nine minutes of almonds and pistachios getting roasted. And once we take that off, we're going to crank up the heat to 425 and roast our chickpeas. Okay, so let's I'll um, kind of give you a brief idea of how we're going to run this class so you have an idea. Um, so the timeline, the way we're thinking is we first roast pistachios, almonds, then we're going to start roasting our chickpeas. Remember to crank up the heat because that's that's why we only use we need 30 minutes. And if you look at these um, garbanzo beans here, I had them sitting in a, on a towel just so that they dry up a little bit and then I'm spreading it all out and I'm not adding oil, I'm not doing anything, we're just roasting the chickpeas. And once the chickpeas come out of the oven, when it's still hot, we are adding our oil and our spices and mixing it all up, all right? And now when you get your chickpeas out, it is gonna be soft because you know it's still hot. And as it cools down, it's gonna be nice and crispy. But this is one of those recipes, say your chickpeas are still really, really moist and 30 minutes is not enough. You've taken it out, you've added your spices and you go, mm, it's still soft, what do I do? You can throw it back in the oven, okay? And roast it for some more time, like another five minutes or 10 minutes, depending on how soft or crisp it is. Like you feel, you know, I just need a little more bite, then go ahead and, um, you know, put it in the oven for another 10, 15 minutes and you can take care of it that way. I roasted, what I did was I took a, almost like two cups of garbanzo beans. I soaked it overnight and then I cooked it the next day. And then because I cooked it in water like that, it took quite some time to dry before I could throw it in the oven. So how much you know, moisture has come out of your garbanzo beans is key to how long it takes for your chickpeas to get roasted. Does that make sense? Um, it does. Actually, I was looking up a little bit about it and some people have said, even though they like to make their own chickpeas, that they tend to like them softer so they didn't use their homemade ones because the ones in the can are a little bit firmer right and that she thought they would not be successful if she used her softer ones um yep so and did you say 425 for the chickpeas yes it is 425 okay. yes absolutely and then you're roasting it in the oven for 30 minutes so sandy if you're going to start doing that right away go ahead and start um add your chickpeas um you know, oh, yeah. into the oven and start roasting it. Okay. All right. And uh, once we get our pistachios out, then we can start cooking our, uh, I am excited about my um, chocolate. And what I did was for the chocolate, I added one extra thing I was telling Lori yesterday. I thought, oh, we're going to have pistachios, which is green. And then we have this beautiful um, ginger, candy ginger. So I, I had some cranberries, so I took some cranberries and I have that that I'm going to sprinkle on the top to give that red, green, you know, kind of look to it, but it's completely optional. So uh, think about it. You can use whatever nuts you have at home, okay? Yeah. It could be walnuts, it could be pistachios, it could be cashew nuts, whatever you have. We didn't add cashew nuts because we're already using cashew nuts in the next recipe, right? So we figured we'll just do it this way. So... Do you have your candy ginger ready? Yes. Is it chopped up? Yes. Awesome. Yep. Then you have almonds. Oh, my oven just, are you just getting my pistachios out? Is there a difference in flavor with you stovetop versus baking or roasting in that? No, not at all. It's the same idea? Okay. Yep. 
Okay, so I'm gonna crank up my heat to 425. Okay. So I have my pistachios. So let's go ahead and set this aside. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be making our spiced cashew nut first. So if you have everything all in the oven and good to go, then let's set a pan on our stove and we'll start our cashew nuts, all right? And we'll talk about it as we cook. I don't know what I was thinking, I put this pan back. Sorry about that. Okay, so for the cashew nuts recipe, you need two cups of cashew nuts, all right? And we have not roasting it or anything, just plain cashew nuts. We have chili flakes. Use as much chili flakes as you are comfortable using. You don't have to use two teaspoons if it is too hot or spicy for you. So go ahead and reduce the heat if you don't want to use um, you know, chick flakes, uh, chick, chili flakes, chick flakes, chili flakes as much as I am using. Then you have honey and then oil and unsweetened coconut. Okay, that's all we're going to use in this recipe. And all of this we got at the co op. So this is what I'm using. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. What is it? It's called um, Let's Do Organic Unsweetened Shredded. Oh coconut. Oh, okay. So um, that's the coconut we're using. We have honey, oil, and we're going to start our pan. Is everybody ready with your pan on the stove? Oh. Uh, uh -oh. Sandy, I'll wait for you. Okay. <laughs> I've got nuts on the stove. Um, I have my cashews. Am I supposed to chop them? No, you don't need to chop your cashews. Just but pour them two, two cups in a bowl. Yes. But this bowl won't go on the stove. That's whatever, okay. Yeah, whatever saute pan you're going to use, go ahead and get that and put that on the stove. Is this the double boiler one? No, this oh, is okay. just roasting. This is our cashew nuts. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yep. So I'm kind of doing the, the uh, pumpkin seeds right now. So okay. I'll just you go with everybody else and I'll catch up with the cashews when these are okay done. okay so go ahead and get your pan on the stove and start heating your pan up okay and then we need a wooden spoon or a metal spoon whatever you want to use to mix it all up all right so i'm going to add my two tablespoons of safflower oil so you just want some kind of oil that doesn't have too much of flavor. So you want a neutral oil. And so this is the one we get at the co-op, the, uh, not the safflower, but sunflower, I mean, um, the organic sunflower oil. So this is what we are using today, okay? So two tablespoons of that. And how do you check if the oil is hot? Um, I grew up where we didn't have a thermometer. So what we would do is keep our, the palm of our hands like 10 inches above the oil to check if the oil is warm enough. Like right now, it's not. So I'm gonna wait for the oil to get a little more warmer and I'll show you what I do. So in this one, we're first gonna add honey, but if you wanna check if our oil is really hot, what I would do is take like say a chili flake and just put that in and see if bubbles are forming around it. When bubbles form around it, then you know your oil is ready, okay? Is everyone's oil ready? Yes. Okay. Sandy, where are you at? Um, my oil is on the stove. My garbanzo beans are roasting and my pumpkin seeds are roasting. Okay. Cindy, are you ready? I guess so, yeah. Uh, Sandy, sorry, I stopped you. I, I said I think so, yeah. Okay. I, All right, so we're going to start off with adding First, we're going to stir in the honey. Oh. Okay. And 
then give that a quick stir. You want it to bubble. And when that bubbles, you're going to add cashew nuts. And that's going to cook your cashew nuts. Okay. You're going to go ahead and just give that a good stir. I'm going to add, put my chickpeas in the oven in the meanwhile. And then add your, once the honey has coated all of your cashew nuts, go ahead and add your coconut, okay? And did we put the chili flakes in? Excuse me. Not yet. Not yet, okay. So, we put this in. And if you need to reduce the heat, reduce the heat because you don't want your cashew nuts to burn, okay? It depends on what kind of stove you have. Sometimes, you know, the electric stove, you switch it off and it still retains the heat. If that's the case, take it off the heat a little bit and start saute mixing it up because the heat is still retaining in your Ooh. pan. You want the cat, you know, you want that coconut. You'll see that the coconut and the cashew nuts kind of slightly change color. That's what you're looking for. Okay. Is everybody doing okay? Thank you, Emily. Thanks, Cindy. Doesn't it smell so good? Just the honey and the coconut in it. Oh my goodness. Emily, you're gonna tell me what have I done to you? Because this is gonna be so addictive. It smells addictive. It. Yes, it is. And you know what? And it slowly changes color. Like mine is starting to brown just a little bit. How is everyone's going? Sayo, how is it? I can't hear you, Sayo. So if you see mine, it's slightly turning brown, okay? At this point, I'm gonna add some salt and some pepper, all right? It's just to taste, guys. You don't have to add a whole lot. Okay, and then Go ahead. There, it's nicely browning now. I'm going to add my chili flakes. And I'm taking it off the stove because this one is an induction stove and it gets hot pretty quickly. See how beautiful that looks? Mm. And your coconut sticks to the cash nut along with the chili flakes because of your honey. That looks amazing. That looks really spicy too. Yummy. You know me. I love spicy. <laughs> All right. If Christmas is this easy, right? You see that? That's gorgeous. Mm. This took us, what, two minutes to get it all done? I'm definitely making that for presents. You know, you could do um, cash nuts. You can do a mixture of different nuts, like a mixed nut mix. Um, like almonds will taste great with this. So what you want to do is take the skin off the almonds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just soak it in warm water for some time, and then the skin comes off real easy. Okay, and then dry it out like in a paper towel or something or just a cloth towel, just like we're doing chickpeas, right? And then do exactly what we're doing now. So you can do cash nuts, you can do almonds, you can do peanuts. Peanuts will taste great mm. with this recipe. So if you're doing for a large crowd of people, you're gonna be giving gifts, cash nuts are expensive. You could do peanuts if you wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. Or you can do this mixture, hazelnuts, 
macadamia nuts. Macadamia nuts will be so good. Um, you can do a mixture of all of this. My mouth is watering just thinking about all these nuts right now. <laughs> I want to do it, but I'm not going to right now. Okay, so this, you can easily throw it in a jar like this, just like a mason jar, just like that, and then put a little bow. You can make a little label and say what it is or write right on top of it, bottle this up and give it as a gift and that'll look fantastic. Right? You can make a little edible gift bag for your friends. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is our chocolate. Sandy, how are we doing? Um, I have a question. My nuts are not brown yet, so okay. I'm just stirring along, but my um, garbanzos are doing very well. I'm, I'm trying them in the air fryer. Just okay, to see what Tim has a question. Yes. Yeah, regarding the, uh, you said that we could substitute peanuts. If we were to use the raw uh, Spanish nuts, do we need to make sure that we take the holes off of it also, the skins? Yes, you want to take the skin off. Um, with peanuts, I would say you can roast it in the oven just for a little bit because it might not get roasted as quickly as it, cash nuts do. And cash nuts, even if they're not completely roasted, you know, you can eat them raw. With peanuts, um, like Growing up, I my mom would say you can't have raw peanuts because your tummy will hurt. Okay. You know? So um, I would suggest using roasted peanuts. If not, if you're going to use peanuts which are not uh, roasted, go ahead and roast it in the oven or a convection oven or even on the stovetop and then do what we're doing today. Okay, thank you. Great question, Tim. I'm glad you asked this question. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do our chocolate recipe. So go ahead and get all your ingredients out. Is everybody's um, garbanzo beans in the oven yet? Okay, awesome. Mine is also in the oven. I don't know what's my oven doing. It keeps going down. It, it starts off at 350 and then it says preheating 295. Ugh. But I've just thrown it in because you know what? With just that heat, it's still roasting. So we'll take care of it later. All right, so let's start our chocolate. I'm gonna get all my ingredients for chocolate. So these are our ingredients for our chocolate. Does everybody have your chocolate ingredients out? We're doing bittersweet, 12 ounces. And this is the one that I'm using. I'll show you. So this is the bag it came in. Can you see that? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. So it is called Equal Exchange Chocolates, which are great. I'm using slivered almonds. Then we have candied ginger. I'm using some cranberries, you don't have to. And then we have chili flakes and let's get our water to start heating. A very important thing that you want to know about when you're melting chocolate like this in a double broiler is that you don't want the chocolate to touch, like, you know, you don't want any water on the chocolate. Does that make sense? Your bowl should touch the water just a little bit, but you don't want any water on the chocolate because it'll start showing those white spots on them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So my water is heating. Yes, Cindy. Um, I was not able to get the same chocolate that you had. I love I think the, the whole delivery stuff. They make it. Um, I couldn't. So can I still use what I have? What do you have? So all they have <laughs> was the different morsels. I got a dark chocolate that's about 63%. Mm -hmm. so, and then they had the milk chocolate morsels. And then I have an, uh, an unsweetened. Mm -mm. Six, six, yeah, you want the 63%. You want to use that dark chocolate, the 63%. Okay. I also have this, it's unsweetened though, bar. No, nah, you don't mm -hmm. want that. Yeah, it doesn't taste like chocolate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my husband thought he was getting me dark chocolate and he got this one which was so bitter. I just couldn't even, no, not even a small speck. What do you use it for, uh, Lori, if it is that bitter? 
an the unsweetened? unsweetened it, yes, it is used in recipes, um, but it, not by itself. It's, you know, there's sugar added. Um, of and, <laughs> and I, I have used it before, but I can't think of the recipe. But you definitely don't want to use that, you know, in place of sweetened chocolate because there's no sugar in it. So it's just, it's not edible by itself. Um, I, I have a the similar question because uh, they, they didn't have it at the co-op when I went. Um, and so I ended up, uh, I got semi-sweet. Yeah, semi, a... semi-sweet is fine. You're just, yeah, okay. it's just gonna be a little sweeter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, semi-sweet is perfectly fine. Yeah, you could use that. You just, you just don't want to use milk chocolate or completely unsweetened, like, you know, chocolate. Okay. You don't want that bitter chocolate, but. And then, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, um, since I don't have a double boiler, I have these, you know, anchor glass bowls. Will that yes. be su yes. su sufficient? Okay. Yes. Great. I'm just using a glass bowl too. And I'm just coarsely chopping my pistachios. I want to still see the chunks of it. You know, I don't want it to be like powdered. Pistachios are so festive looking and pumpkin seeds. I love either one of them. So San Sandy, are you using pumpkin seeds? Uh, yes, I am. What's everyone using? I've got pistachios and almonds. Nice. They're nice and green, pretty. Very nice, very pretty. You have your water boiling, all of you? Yes. Okay. Let me know when you're all ready and we'll start doing that. And so what I'm going to do is I have a silk pad like this. Okay. So I'm going to invert my baking sheet like that, put my silk pad on, on top of this so that I can put my chocolate over this and spread it. Oh, okay. Does, uh, does everybody have a silk pad? If not, they can use parchment paper. Okay. One of the two. And I have my, and go ahead and get your spatula so that you can use your spatula to spread it. I just threw mine in the uh, dishwasher. Let me get that, okay. Everyone ready? Is your water boiling? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you have all your nuts and everything ready by you so that once we transfer it, we spread it, then we can, you know, top everything off, okay? So go ahead and keep a bowl over the pot that you are boiling water in and add your chocolate. And you just want all of the chocolate to completely melt, okay? It's so hard for me. Once I measure everything and I had it out, I wanted to keep munching on it and I had to stay away from it. That's the hardest part when you're cooking with delicious stuff. Do you cover the top or just keep it open? I'm keeping it open and I just keep stirring it. And if it doesn't melt enough for you, you could always throw it in the microwave just for a few seconds. Okay, but don't add water, don't do any of that. Can we add a lot of different ingredients to this? I did hear you, Cindy, say that again. Can you add different ingredients to this? Absolutely. What are, what are, you, what are you thinking? Well, my son is allergic to nuts. Okay. So I was thinking, this might be bad, but I was thinking of adding pretzels for the crunch. That would be delicious. What do you think? Yeah, it's that salty, <laughs> crunchy. Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. Okay, I'll try it. <laughs> I'm going to wait to see your picture, Cindy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you can add dried fruits. 
Yeah. Yeah. How about seeds, like pumpkin seeds? Oh, Is he yeah. okay with it? Yeah, you could do that too. About, you know, he's nine. <laughs> I know what you're talking. I have a 10 year old in the house. <laughs> Nothing bad, Ashwin. <laughs> <laughs> like, hmm, what I can are you hear talking him. about me. <laughs> you know, I was um, Chef Roxanne, one of our uh, mutual friends, Laurie's and mine. She was in another class of mine, and she, um, Ashwin came in and said hi to her. And I said, I'm sorry. And she goes, No, this is real life. You want to see all these things. You don't want to be that professional chef teaching like a master chef class. You want it to be a family thing where everyone is saying hi to each other and doing all of that. So don't ever apologize for this. And I said, okay, I won't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was saying, these are the things you can do when you're teaching in person. So enjoy this, mm -hmm. you know? That's like, true. Yep. Roxy will always set you straight. Yep, I love her. I knew. I love her too. She is so amazing. You should see her in American River College when she's teaching the students, Lori. Oh my goodness. I wish I could see that. Students are scared of her. Yeah. You know how many I know eggs she makes them you know how many eggs she makes them cook to get them to make scrambled eggs and omelets right? Like crates and crates of eggs are used really? to make these kids learn. Yeah, she is amazing. And the same way when they're teaching chocolate chip cookies, what they do is Chef Teresa will have one group weigh everything and the other group measure everything. And uh, they'll show the difference of how different it is and how much better it tastes when you weigh everything. So it really That's does make, recipe. it makes that big of a difference. Is everyone's chocolate melting? Mine's just starting to melt. I still have chunks. Mm -hmm. Mine's just starting to melt also. Okay. Oh, it smells so good. Lori, are there still path mats at the co-op? I don't think so. I wish we had them. I don't you don't? So. I thought you had them at Did one we? point. Yeah. We, we might. I, I'd have to go down and look. You know where all the utensils are, like the measuring spoons yeah. and cups and things? I have seen them before. Oh. I need to get one. Mm. Want I recently one? got this. Whole, <laughs> I do. <laughs> I recently got these. Yeah, I those like are these nice. because it has the portion, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Mine's melted. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and transfer that to a, the parchment paper or silk pad, whatever you're using, and spread it in a thin uniform layer. That's what you're looking for. Yeah. Mine's almost there, guys. Looks like everybody's a little ahead of you, Shankri. I know. I'm talking too much, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, my stove is not. Now, do they need to be doing anything quickly? N they just have to spread it. Mine's ready, too. Uh-oh. Water. Uh-oh. What happened? No water, Sandy. I know. It came from the oven room. Okay. That's okay. If you, you, you can say that's my excuse. I can give it to anyone. I'll eat it all. Okay. So you're going to spread it thin. Oh my gosh, this looks so lovely. Lori, I'm sorry, Lori, that you're watching. Yeah, you know what you I'm should sorry. do? You should cook along with us. I can't do that and moderate. You know what you should do? You should get in your car and bring me all this. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was closer, you know? I know. I wish you lived closer. I too. really would do it. I know you would. Oh, dear. I used to move close to the co-op when I lived in Sacramento. I loved it. <laughs> Aw. Sandy, are you doing okay? 
Um, I'm not really making a nice square. It's a big blob. Is that all right? Yeah, it can be any shape you it's want okay. it to be. It's okay. It's going to be a bark. It's going to okay. be a bark, okay. right? Which we're going to just cut into pieces. So why we couldn't do about it. something that's square, then, then for those of us that are laterality challenged, it would not be so ugly. No, no, no. Don't worry about it being ugly. So now, once your chocolate is spread, you're going to go ahead and sprinkle whatever nuts you're going to use. Okay. Come on, come on, chocolate. Saya, how are you doing? I don't see you, and you're muted. You can give me a thumbs up. That's all you need to tell me if you're doing okay. Awesome. If not, then unmute yourself. Yeah. I spread the nuts. That's it, and then you're going to just let it cool. Go ahead and add some cayenne and sea salt or chili flakes, whatever you're using. The Malden sea salt would be Isn't perfect that for this. Yeah. Um, and then I'm using candy ginger as well. Oh my gosh, this is going to be a burst of different flavors. So in the directions, I made the cayenne, the onions, the oil. No onions. The, no the onions. onions are for chickpeas. The onion powder. That's for chickpea. Oh, this that's is for chickpeas. chickpeas. Okay. And the turmeric, that's so all for chickpeas. All okay. for chickpeas. For chocolate, okay. you're just using nuts, sea salt, and cayenne or chili flakes, whatever you want. Okay? Okay. Uh, da, 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 sea salt. Cindy doing okay? My Cindy? Oh, no. Uh, oh, 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 okay. we have a different Cindy. This is Cindy Aurora. Your Cinderella wasn't able to make it. I know. She is with her um, grandkids right now. Emily, um, are you doing okay? okay. Can, can yeah, we use I'm just chili flakes? with all the fun stuff now. What can we that? use chili flakes or yeah. cayenne? You can Whatever use Whatever you want to use. Okay. Hi, Corinne. Corinne just joined us. Okay. Hi, Corinne. Don't be spicy. And then ginger. Does that go on it? Candy ginger. Yes. Okay. How um, is this too? I don't know if you can see. Are my chunks too chunky? Yeah, they're too yeah you want to chop one. that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is what mine looks like, guys. It's beautiful. Oh, wow. Lovely. Good. And I'm not, I didn't do any extra care to decorate or anything. I was just sprinkling things over it. And I'm adding my cranberries. How long do you think this is going to last in my house? Not, not very long. long. Are you adding dried what cranberries? I'm gonna, yes, they're dried cranberries. Oh. And what you want to do is just take your spatula and just gently press this down so all the nuts and um, everything gets kind of embedded in your chocolate. Just very gently. Saya, how does yours look? You can use the space bar to unmute. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. That's good. <laughs> how does uh, it look? I'm not sure how spread. How much to spread? It's you just want it to be thin like a bark. You know the typical chocolate bark? So like um, a quarter inch thickness is what you're looking for. You don't want it to be too thick. You don't want oh. a big slab of chocolate. You want it to be thin, yeah. a little bit of, you know, nuts and spices on them. Okay. Amazing. Cindy did well? I'd love to see your chocolates if you can. Oops. 
That looks great. Good. That's beautiful. Very beautiful. Cindy, how can I see yours? <laughs> Did she just fall? <laughs> it's the it's that camera trying to change that can setting. I, it's so show? hard sometimes. Yeah, Sandy, show us. Emily's looks beautiful. Sandy, we can't see yours. Lift it up a uh, higher. Higher. Very pretty. That's all you're looking for. Beautiful. Okay. Wow. I, I can see how the sill path would be more, um, more better mm -hmm. than the uh, parchment oh, because it slides around. That's why yeah. I was having trouble spreading it. Yeah. yeah. But it's kind of like Cindy looks oh. very pretty. Mm, that's pretty. I love it. Okay, so this, we're going to set this aside. How many more minutes do we have on our chickpeas? I took it out. Mine's good enough. Okay. Oh, mine says a minute and a half. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about Sandy? Air fryer. They were done 10 minutes ago. Wow. Awesome. Cindy, yours is ready too? Okay. We'll wait by the time you can all start cleaning up your kitchen and then we'll start. Um, you know what? Um, Lori, what you can do is you can pause recording if you want to. Don't do. Go ahead. All right. So with split chick or with the chickpeas, you can do different flavorings. You can do herb de Provence if you want to. Then you can do lemon flavor, ground garlic, just garlic powder and onion powder if you want. I've used Italian seasonings, so it's really up to you what flavors you like. Like just salt and cayenne will do. Salt and ground cumin or a ground cumin and, you know, a coriander or uh, garam masala, just plain garam masala, just salt. Like, you know, for my son, I would just do salt so he can just munch on them because he doesn't like too much spicy food. So really you can play around with these. And when it's still hot, so the secret to roasting these is if you were Oops. adding um, spices to this and roasting it in the oven, what would happen is it can burn right? The spices can get burnt. This way, your spices don't get burnt because your oil is still, your um, chickpeas are still hot and you can add all the spices now and get it all mixed up. Does that make sense? Okay. Is if everybody's chickpeas, chickpeas out? Are, if your chickpeas are cold, should you put them in the microwave? Just a little bit. Okay. If you want to, but I would say if your oven is still hot, just throw it in the oven it's for not. just a few. It's not. It's sort of. It's sort of like it's all or, or nothing. It's cold now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, um, just do thirty put seconds. Stove, huh? Yeah, do thirty it's... seconds. Not a whole lot, okay? Mm -hmm. Sayo, is yours ready? I put it back in the oven because it's cool off. Okay. So tell me when you're all ready, okay? I don't want it to be cold for one person and warm for the other. So Emily, if you want to just leave yeah. yours in the oven for some time, just so it's not getting cold. So let's look at our cashew nuts and see how our cashew nuts look and how we can bag those cashew nuts if you want. You could do plastic bags, you can do, um, you know, the bottle that I was showing you. Uh, this looks so good. And it's like candied cash nuts. So I like to probably do a half cup, you know, per family. Not a whole lot because they are spicy. So a bag like this. Oh, oh, scary. And just tie it up with a beautiful ribbon and it's good to go. If you're turned into sort of a toffee, like you, you just have to separate it. Oh, separate it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. See how I'm separating okay. mine. That's it. Okay. Cause mine's almost, yeah, it's almost like a brittle. Okay. Yeah. You just have to like separate it and that's it. Okay. Okay. Mm. It's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. How does your chickpea looks now? Is it all good? Mm -hmm. Mine's warm. Okay, so let's get started.
All right. So can everybody see my garbanzo beans? Yes, we can see them, Shankri. Okay, so go ahead and drizzle your oil in it. Use your hands or a spoon, and you just want to coat the oil really well on your garbanzo beans, okay? Then add all of your seasonings, onion powder, your cayenne, garam masala, turmeric, and salt. And just give that a nice toss. Lori, are you gonna be at the co-op tomorrow? I am. Because I could walk some of these over for you to taste. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, uh -huh. look at that. You're getting some. Oh, Sandy. No, so it's nice. not really sweet. It's really more of a, a, a cry for help because <laughs> they're here. You're going to eat them all? <laughs> well, I don't know. These <laughs> are things that happen. <laughs> oh, Sandy. It smells so good. This again, you can, you know, store in a bottle or like Sandy wants to gift it off to Lori in a mason jar. And then we can be guilt free. <laughs> How does it taste, Wait, Emily? I see you're tasting it. That's super good. And can you tell that all these snacks are super mm. addictive? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. What Actually, are you doing? What are we I, doing? Mine kind of tastes like kitty litter. Um, uh, uh, I'll pass. A, little no. dry, a little on the dry side. <laughs> but, but maybe I need more spices or oil. You probably or need a little more spices. So see, yeah. I have a whole big jar here in my house that we snack on. And I don't know if you can hear it. You can hear that crispness, you know? And so I soaked and cooked and did this and I have a big jar of it. And if mm. I wanna add, so now you said you needed to add more spices to it because it's probably air fried where, you know, your, uh, it has completely dehydrated and you don't have right. that, you know, so maybe you need a little bit more oil, Sandy. I did that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and then mix it all up. Because actually I doubled your spices because I'm a spicy girl too. So, um, mm, oh, mine is, mm. I need a little salt. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh. That is so good. I'm going to say, are there that. other nuts? I mean, nuts, um, beans that can be roasted like, um, <laughs> you know, like does anybody ever do this with kidney beans or white beans or something else? Garbanzo beans. Um, I other than garbanzo sad. beans, what I've, I've done is chana dal, have, um, the co-op has yeah. chana dal. It's a split chickpea. Have you seen that, Sandy? The yellow ones? Mm -hmm. Let oh, me yeah. show you. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. I'm all over those. <laughs> Wow. Hmm, I'm all out of it. Oh, it's here. Ooh. So these. Yeah. Oh, hold on. What? Let me go to my other screen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is soak this for a couple of hours drain it out completely, and then you can either deep fry them or oven roast them just like this, and then just salt and cayenne, and that's it. Wow. They, um, the same thing with the yellow mung beans. That's also available at the co-op. Mm -hmm. You can um, soak them, and you just have to soak them like for 10 minutes, and then drain them completely, lay it on a cloth, to dry, just like how we did for garbanzo beans. And that, mm -hmm. with just a little bit of oil, you can fry it. You can fry it and then it's done. You can do salt and pepper. Um, we do salt and pepper. We don't do anything else to it, just salt and tons of pepper in it. Mm -hmm. So this one, the chocolate, you want it to cool down at least for 30 minutes at room temperature. 
If you're in a hurry to eat it, throw it in the refrigerator, but I would like to at room temperature because it turns out a lot better that way. Okay, and once it's ready, then you can just, it comes out very easily and then you can break it into barks. You don't have to cut them in uniform sizes, throw it in an airtight container and it'll stay for quite some time. If you were, if it was summer, I'd have said, keep it in the refrigerator, but now you can just leave it out. Okay, any questions? Will it go in the freezer? You can. Yeah. You definitely can put them in the freezer too. Okay. Should the, should the chickpeas be oily or dry? It doesn't have to be oily. It'll be dry. Okay. They're delicious. Are I they am like, glad you uh, like it. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Sayo, are you doing okay? How are your chickpeas? All good? Yeah, I was munching on them. All right. Eat up it. Eat up it. <laughs> Very good. Yes, Sandy. Um, are the chickpeas like pasta? I mean, with all those powerful spices, will they be more impactful in the morning? Or are they are what they are now is what they'll be? I mean, they do they be what? Yeah, it'll be the same. Okay. Yeah. Um, Lori and I had another question. Like, we were planning on a turmeric class for next month. Um, is that something you will be interested in? Turmeric? Yeah. Cooking with turmeric. Um, do you know what some of the dishes might be? Uh, we're going to be making an Ayurvedic dish called kichri, uh, which is with yellow mung beans because it's really good on your tummy. It's great for digestion and it's great for winter months. So uh, we can make that with tons of vegetables. So it's like a one pot dish. Mm. And then we're going to do like a... Um, you know, the yellow milk that you now find in uh, most stores called the golden milk. We're going to make that, which is super simple, um, which you can make with soy milk or any kind of milk that you want. So we were thinking of that. But if do you have dishes that you want to learn? Do you have suggestions on what classes you'd like to see? Mm. So, go ahead. Cindy, we are waiting for you, I think. Oh, um, can you, okay. I mean, I th I like the one pot dishes. I mean, things that I can, um, that are not multi, just cause I'm bit like busy working, but still good kind of dishes. The one pot, um, like the brownie was great because I was, a, it's like a, di it's like a meal. So yeah. and having, learning things like that makes just kitchen life helpful. So we, um, we are, if the other people that are here, the biryani, we're definitely doing that again. Um, that'll be in January. And then we are doing the cooking with turmeric. And then she's also doing a lamb kima, correct? Yeah, it's ground lamb with, uh, with spices and uh, green peas. And then you can have it if you want. You can use store-bought naan or you can we can make roti from scratch and you can have it with roti or you can have it with rice, with bread, whatever you prefer. It's a very versatile side dish that you can have. And also Sandy, if um, you're interested in the uh, Barani class, uh, we have a vegan version. So I can send you that recipe and you can still join the class, but make it um, vegan. Is it Barani rice? Yes. Okay. Um, does, is, does Chana Masala have um, turmeric in it? Yes. I, I'm a chickpea one pot girl. Um, <laughs> I don't there know are tons of recipes with chickpeas. Like you can do chickpeas and eggplant with coconut milk. Mm -hmm. um, you can do chickpeas and spinach. Right. There's, but um, is that something we could learn? I mean, is that too complicated yeah. for the cooking no. class? Because no. I always buy it at Trader Joe's and in a little pouch and it's just not enough. No, because I want to eat 10 of them. Sandy, we're going to teach you how to make that yourself. So I think we should plan those classes in February for sure. With some chickpea sure. recipes. And you can always send Lori an email and suggest what you want to learn, but do it you know, as soon as possible so we can plan it accordingly. All right. Have you ever had like a dessert? <laughs> desserts, but like an Indian desserts. I don't know how to make, except for the carrot. I don't know how to make any of the others. They look very complicated. They're not really, we can make, we can definitely do that too. Yeah. 
and the, my well, only concern is starting January, everybody will suddenly start being super health conscious and they wouldn't want to join the class if you say desserts <laughs> only. Um, so I try to add like a couple of other things on the side. So we do a one pot dish and maybe a dessert or something. Uh, but we can definitely plan something like that too.